So today we're looking at a big subject, how to turn your slice into a draw. Now most golfers want to hit a draw, most golfers hit a slice. So it's how we transition from that slice to the draw with one practice drill, one exercise with a little bit of graft on the practice range should make a huge difference to your ball flight. You should see progressive change in your ball fight from say a slice to a fade to a straight to a draw. If you work on this exercise, the amount you need to do it is going to be very individual. Quick side note, I've just started doing online lessons on Skillest. I'll have a link down below in my description. Check that out if you fancy an online lesson with myself. Keep watching to see how we turn a slice into a draw. So a slice shot, the most commonly hit shot in golf, I would probably say 80 to 90% of golfers would hit the ball left to right or slice the ball. What causes a slice? Well, in simple terms, it's cutting across the golf ball with an out to in path and the club face being open to that and pretty much being open to the target line as well. So we want to change that relationship. We want to change that into a draw pattern, which would be a in to out path so shallow in the club and so on, with a club face that is close to that path, but open to that target. Now, I'm not going to get too fussy on whether the club face is open to the target and close to the path. We just want a club face where we're increasing the rate of closure. With a slice, there's not enough rate of closure, and we're definitely cutting across the ball. And with a draw, we're hitting from the inside, and from a slice, we're hitting from the outside. So we want to do things that challenge those two things. Let's increase the, increase the rate of closure, and hit more from the inside. Those are the two key things we're gonna try and do with this video. What I want you to do is one exercise that fits both. If we take a tee and we put it in the glove, in the flap area of your golf glove, like so, you'll see it in there. We're gonna use that to show the rotation in the arm. So again, with a fade, this will be pointing more upwards or a slice. And we're also gonna take our dress position and then take a tee peg and put it level, roughly, with our first lace in our shoe, about three to four club heads to the side of our foot, behind us like so. Now you're going to take your address position, we're going to swing back as normal, and on the downswing, we're going to hit that T-peg. Now as we hit that T-peg, we want to hit it in the direction of this camera, so at 90 degrees to our target, when we do that, I'm also going to get you to feel like you point this tee to the ground. So we get the supination of this arm to release your arms, not the hands, the arms, while swinging way to the right. So the evidence should tell us if we swung from the inside enough by hitting the tee, and the tee peg point to the ground will tell us if we've released the club enough. Now, if you're fairly straight hit and you do this, you will start to become more a hook hooker or a hook player. So we definitely want to feed what we need. As I said, 90% of you out there are faders or slicers. If you want to change that, this exercise will change that. This is the most influential drill I will do with any fader or slicer in my lesson tee. Let's have a go at a practice swing. So take our address as normal, swing back, hit the tee or thereabouts. Let's do that again. And tee to the ground. As long as you're hitting the ground, roughly where the tee is, that's absolutely fine. If you get fed up putting the tee peg in every time, then just hit the ground. Let's do one more of those. And what you'll see there is a definite change of direction and a definite release. So once you've done two or three of them, then go ahead hitting the ball with the same feels. And you want that ratio, two or three practice swings to one ball. Let's try a ball. And you'll see there, that one's got a lot of right to left curvature, finishing just left of my target, so more of a hook, but again, I'm not really a slicer. But it definitely felt that I had this chain reaction, this movement going on in the golf swing, which is definitely that kind of hook pattern that we look to see. I want you hooking the ball on the driving range, and when you play, hitting little buttery draws. So taking this to the course, what you would do 
is you would do a practice swing, like so, step behind the ball, line yourself up, and feel you're doing the same movement. And go ahead then, hit it with confidence, and you'll start to get that draw shape straight away, like that one. So I hope you enjoyed that, how to turn your slice into a draw. This one exercise works on both the release and the path and the shallowing of the club to make that happen. It gets rid of the two faults that cause that slice and, and slice shot, that over the top move, that path issue, that face release issue. This one drill changes both of those. Give it a go and let me know down below how you got on and how you found it and how it feels. Also, if you've enjoyed the video, please click like and share the video, it really helps. Also, if you haven't already followed or subscribed, hit my logo in this bottom corner. Let me help you improve your golf. And thank you today for joining me at the Forest of Arden. See you again here soon.